<clears throat> okay, for surface area, um, you can think of this as a three-dimensional object that you're finding all of the faces and adding up the individual areas. So you can do that uh, individually, and we'll show you some formulas later on uh, that'll make it more efficient. So this eighth grade math uh, star chart is something that you want to have handy. So you think of surface area as what's on the outside of a shape. So for instance, any word problems that have to do with uh, painting walls or wrapping paper, stuff that goes on the outside um, would be a surface area question versus what we're going to get into later, which is volume, which is what the figure contains. Okay, so the first thing you got to distinguish is are they asking for all of the surface areas or are they asking only for the lateral surface area? Um, between the two, uh, you're going to have a slightly smaller formula for the lateral uh, and then the total surface would include the bases as well. So in your formula chart, you'll see some of the familiar ones for area, which you're going to have to know also. And then right below it is surface area and it breaks it down into uh, a couple of different figures. So the lateral surface area, again, is without the bases. And if you look at the column next to it with the total, the only difference is that for the prism, you see how it includes two times big B. And then for the pyramid, it's the exact same formula except for one B. So we know that the pyramid has one base and the prism has two base. So the capital B in this case is the area of the base versus this one up here, which is just the length of the base uh, times the height of the rectangle or parallelogram. Okay? So the cylinder, if you look, the difference between the two uh, is this 2 pi r squared, and we know this pi r squared is the area of a circle. So a cylinder has two circles, and then this essentially is the lateral surface area, which goes around the side of your two uh, circular bases. Okay? So again, um, if you're looking for a prism, you have the, the formula on your sheet says big P times H plus 2 times big B. So if big B is the area of the base, what do you think P is, big P? The perimeter of the base. And then again, H, even though it looks the same as it does up here in the two-dimensional objects, you're considering H to be the height of the figure, meaning the perpendicular distance between the bases. So not the height of the base, but the height of the figure. Okay. Um, so for instance, it's pretty easy if you look at example number one here, which gives you this rectangular prism in net form, because you can see all six of the faces at once. So if you're given a net like this, you can go ahead and find the area of all the faces and add them up. So you figured up here you have a 9 by 5, so there's a 45, which is parallel and congruent to another 45. Um, this one in the middle then is a 9 by 7, so 9 times 7 got a 63, this one would be the same, and then the final one would be a 7 by 5, so you got a 35 and a 35. So if you're adding all those together, uh, you can add them all individually, you can double each one, or you can simply say, I'm going to double the sum of all three unique faces, like so. So, one, two, three, four. so you add up 35, 45, and 63, um, 35, 45, and 63, I got 143 times 2, gives you a surface area of 286, and again, it's an area, so your units will be squared. Okay? So if you're given the net, you can show the area of all the faces, and then show how you're totaling them up. If we wanted to use this, uh, this formula sheet, though, and find the total surface area, I'm going to show you that this is another way you can check your answer, or it could possibly be a shortcut. So big P, again, is the, area, uh, the perimeter of the base, and big B is the area of the base. So I'm going to write that down, and we're going to work with it a little bit. So big S is the surface area, uh, is equal to big P times H plus twice big B. And we know in a rectangular prism, any of these faces could be a base because all of them are going to be um, perpendicular to the others. So we'll go ahead and shade the base. If you're not in the habit of doing that, please do. So if I'm going to consider this one to be the base, we know it can be a base because it's parallel and congruent to this one. And if I'm considering that to be the base, then the height that I've got to use is the distance between the two bases which is this 5. So if I'm going with the pink bases, then the height that I'm going to be using this formula is 5. So if you plug it in, you think, okay, 
This perimeter looks like it's 9, 9, 5, and 5. So we got 9, 9, 5, and 5. Here's one way we could do it. And then the height we're saying is, wait, 9, 9. These are 7s. 7, 7. And then the height is this 5. And then I'm going to say twice the area of the base. So the area of the base we're looking at is a 9 by 7. And then you could go ahead and crunch your numbers. So we got 18 and 14. That's a 32 times 5 plus twice the area of the base. 9 times 7 is your 63. Double that. We got 126 plus 32 times 5, 160. And it looks like if I add 160 and 126, it gives us that exact same surface area. So you can uh, find the area of each individual face, add them up, or here's one version of the formula. So we could have used the pink rectangles, we could have used the little ones here, or we could have used the 9 by 5 on top. Okay? So if you have something like number 2, and it's not get deconstructed into your flat, um, go ahead and apply that formula. So any of these could be your base. So whichever one you choose to be the base, just make sure that you highlight it or somehow indicate it. So if you can tell, they're kind of showing that this 5 by 3 is your base. So if that's a base, and that's a base, then the height that we have to use is the 8 feet, which is the distance between the two. So again, if I'm going to use my formula, I think the perimeter of the base, we can also say, hmm, 5 and 5, 3 and 3, that's 16, times the height, which is 8, plus twice, big B is the area of the base, that's a 5 by 3. And then if you crunch your numbers, you get 128 plus 2 times 15 for a grand total of 158. And don't forget this is an area, so your units are square feet. Okay? Um, this formula works for any type of prism. So if you look at the next one here, we do have a prism because I have two parallel and congruent bases that they've done you the favor of shading one of them. So this is the uh, triangular prism, and the height that you're using in this formula would be 11 because that's the distance between the two bases. So the first thing you do is shade your bases and then label your height, okay? The height of the three-dimensional object, not the height of the base. So if you're finding total surface area, you're saying big P times H plus twice the area of the bases. So the perimeter, again, of the base is this three, uh, three dimensions here, 10 plus 12 plus, what's the length of this one? Well, if these are congruent, if the one in the back is 15.6, so is the one in front. So look at how I'm plugging in all of my numbers first. The height that we're using is the height of the figure, so 11. Plus twice, how do I find the area of the base? Well, it's a triangle. So if you need to look at your area formulas, remember they're up here, we're doing half the base times the height, 10 and 12 are perpendicular to each other. So we'll say 10 times 12, and that's how you input everything into that formula and crunch your numbers. So we got 10 plus 12 plus 15.6. So 10 plus 12 plus 15.6 gives me 37.6 times 11. And notice how I'm showing the work down the page. And then I could say half of 10, which is 5, times 12, which is 60. Double that would be a 120. So we have these two numbers combined. Look. So this combined with this is 533.6 and centimeters squared. Okay. So now we're looking at a different shape. It's not a prism because uh, our faces are not polygons. And it's what you see below, which is essentially the net of a cylinder. So we have two congruent circular bases and in between that we have this long rectangle that you can think is like a like label on a can that goes all the way around that serves as the lateral face. Okay? So the height of this figure is 5 because that's the distance between my two circular bases and you think how do I find the other this long part of my rectangle? Well you think essentially if this goes all the way around the circle if it's like the label of a can if I unroll that it's going to be essentially the circumference. So this is circumference times the height would give you the lateral area 
plus the two circular bases. So your formula that you're using for a cylinder, if it was lateral surface area, looks like this, and we've seen this formula before, 2 pi r, it's way, way, way up at the top for a circumference of a circle. So 2 pi r times the height, which is the distance between the circles, and then if we wanted to find total surface area, notice it's the lateral plus 2 pi r squared, we know pi r squared to be the area of the circle. Right? So if you're using that formula, and say you wanted to use it in exact pi, you would fill in the radius is 15, the height is 5, um, here again is the radius, and when you crunch the numbers, you can multiply all three of these together and put the pi at the end, and then uh, for, the radii for the area of the circle, you'd want to square the radius first, which is 225, before you doubled it. So essentially we have 150 pi plus double 225 is 450 pi. I can combine like terms essentially, so 150 plus 450 is 600 pi, then put the units at the end, right? So if it's exact pi, this is in fact the total surface area of this entire cylinder. If we wanted to, if I asked you what the lateral surface area was, it's, you've already calculated it. This right here, inches squared, would be the lateral surface area, right? All right. So then if you look at number five, you have the cylinder when it's all uh, in three-dimensional form, and you're using the exact same formula. So the radius is 2, the height, the distance between the two bases is 2.5, uh, and again the radius is 2. So if you multiply all of these numbers, you get uh, double 2.5 is 5, um, twice that is 10, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 10 pi plus 8 pi is 18 pi. Go ahead and put your units at the end. Now, if you were asked to find approximate pi, say they gave you some sort of um, rounding instructions, then you should just multiply 18 times 3.14 right now. So instead of doing it here and then doing it here and working with the crazy decimal numbers, you can keep every, all of your work in terms of exact pi until the very, very end. Okay. So now we're going to look at our final shape which is the surface area of a pyramid. So go ahead and pause and copy this down. Um, we know that the vertex is directly across from our one base, and all of our lateral faces on a pyramid are going to be triangles. So if you looked at this as a net and found the surface area, we have our one base plus all of our triangles. If this was an octagonal pyramid, we've had eight triangles surrounding an octagon for a total of nine uh, faces. Okay, so the formula for this is going to be in the same air, uh, same section of your surface area, um, and it says surface area is big P, which is again the perimeter of the base, times the slanted L, which is going to be the slant height. Okay, so think of the slant height as the slant height, which is the height of each of your lateral faces. And again, the height has to be perpendicular to the base of that triangle. So the lateral face is here. The slant height goes on the side. It doesn't go all the way up uh, from the center down, right? That's the height of the figure, all right? So looking at that formula in action for this example, which is example number six, uh, we have a pyramid because it's got one base that meets in the uh, vertex. And if I asked you to find the total slant height, or the total surface area, you'd be using this formula. So again, big P is the perimeter of the base, which is um, an equilateral triangle, which is 3, 3. And then notice that that's 3. And then the slant height is 6, because that's the one that's on each of the triangular faces, perpendicular to the base of 3. Right? And then big B, remember, is the area of the base. So the triangular base is half base times height. So the base of the triangular base, confusing, uh, is 3. Perpendicular to that is 2.6, and I half it because it's a triangle. So if you crunch those numbers, you end up with 30.9 square inches. Okay? So now, it's your turn to practice. So calculate the total surface area of all four of these figures. All right, so see how you did. Uh, the first one, remember that the base is the equilateral triangle, which is 5, 5, and 5 on all sides, which means that notice how I labeled the height of the figure as the distance between those two triangles is 14. Okay, the, on number 2, the lateral slant height is 4.5, uh, so when you plug it into this formula, you should get 36 square inches. On number 3, it might be a slightly different method, 
I use the kind of shaded sides that I already saw um, as my basis, which means that the 10, which is between the two, would be my height. No matter which method that you do, you should get 724 square inches. And finally, the cylinder here for total surface area, if you're leaving it in terms of exact pi, is 10 pi square centimeters. And if you have questions on this, make a note of it, and we'll go over it uh, next class.